Hello everyone and welcome back to this Football Manager 2017 experiment. Um, I'm going to call it the Big V Little experiment and the idea behind this one is that we're going to give a team in the Premier League the shortest height and the lowest weight possible and another team in the Premier League the biggest weight and the tallest height possible. So the teams that I have picked for this are Manchester City and Manchester United. Manchester City um, if we take a look at their senior squad and pick someone like John Stones, for example, have the shortest possible height and weight. Now, I'm quite interested to see how much this has an impact on the game. I imagine defensively it could be quite a problem, but offensively, shorter players tend to do better. So I'm expecting people like David Silva to do quite well. Um, I think maybe Sergio Aguero could really benefit from this. Um, it'll also be interesting to see, obviously the height can't change, but the weight can change through training, I think. So I'll be interested to see if players gain weight, because obviously Yaya Toure is now one of the shortest people in football um, and one of the lightest people in football. So it'll be interesting to see how they train up. I've done it for every single player in their first team squad. So the younger players don't have this if they're in the, in the under 21s or under 23s whatever it is now um, and it obviously any transfers they make won't be affected either but it'll be quite interesting just to see how they get on in the first few seasons um, we are going to skip forward about four or five years in this experiment and we'll also play a game between the two Manchester clubs but first things first we need to take a quick look at Manchester United as well um, and if we have a look at their senior squad you will see that if we go to Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he is now 212 centimetres. That's over two metres tall and 120 kilos. That's something like over 20 stone, um, which is just insane uh, for how big he is. I'm quite interested to see if the game engine will also affect it. So I think what we'll do is we will have a look at the matches between the two Manchester clubs and maybe play one of those games out, watch the highlights of it at least. Um, and see how they do. But every player has been affected. Um, I think this should make Manchester United's defence a little bit better, but they might be exposed to balls over the top. Um, I'm not sure how it will affect the midfielders very much, but it's going to be really interesting to see. I don't think this is going to have the extreme effect of getting both teams relegated. I think they'll continue to challenge for the title. They'll obviously buy new players as well. Um, but I do want to see what impact it has and if these two clubs are still capable of winning the title when they've had such a big hindrance. Because if you've played this game enough, you'll know Manchester City tend to do quite well the first one or two seasons. Um, and then Manchester United come through and start to really dominate the Premier League in this game. That's my experience of it anyway. So I'm expecting these two clubs ordinarily to have won two or three of the first five titles and we are going to go forward I think four or five years um, and take a look at how the Premier League will have changed um, and certainly how these clubs will have changed will be very very interesting. So what we'll do now is we'll go forward five years and then we'll take a look at how Big V Little are getting on. Well, we are now five years into the future. It's 2021. We're with Manchester City. We're going to take a quick look at their fixtures. Then we'll have a look at their transfers, their squads. We'll do the same with Manchester United. And then I think we'll pick one of the nice Manchester derbies to take a look at the highlights of. But looking at their first season, they actually started out absolutely brilliantly, given that they are basically invisible on the pitch. No height and no weight. They did very well. Uh, even beating Arsenal and Liverpool in their first few games drawing with Barcelona as well, uh, carried on doing quite well. They beat Manchester United in the big V little first real match, carried on doing well. Um, even in the EFL Cup quarter final, were beaten by Barcelona 2-1, um, but still getting very good results. They've actually done quite well here, getting into the Champions League knockout stages, beating Manchester United again. So at the moment, it's 2-0 on big V little. Uh, lost the EFL Cup final to Stoke, though. Peter Crouch inevitably getting the goal. Why would you not let Peter Crouch get the goal when you're playing players who are 1 meter 20 um, But they seem to do very, very well and actually carried on sort of through the Champions League right up to the semi-finals, just losing the away leg by one extra goal. Um, so they did very well in their first season. It didn't look to affect them at all. But in their second season, there's a few more red dots on this page, losing to Newcastle in the EFL Cup, uh, beaten 4-2 in the next big V little match, uh, Ibrahimovic getting two goals, and then a run of three defeats on the bounce. So it looks like this might start to be taking an effect, but then they turn it around, they have a really long unbeaten run. Look at this unbeaten run. 
that is huge. That's 20 plus games um, through the FA Cup quarterfinals against Manchester United as well um, in the Europa League uh, because they were they didn't manage to get through their Champions League group, which is quite interesting. So in the Europa League, carried on going, knocked out by Leicester in the Europa League quarterfinal, knocked out by Chelsea in the FA Cup semi final, um, and I doubt they won the Premier League that year. Uh, into the third season. Looks like a fairly standard season to me. They managed to get into the Champions League knockout stages where they get knocked out by Real Madrid. They're out of the FA Cup to Crystal Palace. Um, lose to Manchester United in the second match they play and the first match. So United decide to take the upper hand in the head-to-heads. The season after that, they're doing a little bit better again. Then they hit another really poor patch of games. Um, they beat Manchester United, though, which was good for them, and then lost to them later in the season. Carried on through the FA Cup, and then were back in the Europa League, um, managing to make the quarterfinal again, where they were knocked out by Stoke of all teams in the quarterfinal after being beaten by Leicester last time out. Looks like they finished in the Europa League places the season before, and then this season, the fifth season, um, carried on doing all right in the league, getting knocked out by QPR. Um, in the Europa League yet again, progressing through to the knockout stages and then getting taken out by Benfica, uh, Besiktas in the second knockout round. A really poor finish to their Premier League season. They actually finished fifth this season. And if you look at their history, fourth, second, third, fifth and fifth. They've been consecu- they're constantly finishing fifth at this point. And they're still quite rich. Let me have a quick look at their transfers and see who they've brought in and out. Um, Victor Kovalenko, they signed for £112 million. Who on earth is this guy? Um, was at Monaco at Shakhtar before that. Well, if you're looking for a wonder kid, maybe he's one of the new database updates. Uh, don't look no further than Victor Kovalenko, apparently. £112 million they paid for him. They also signed Christian Pulisic for £41 million. Um, Alex Vidal left for £5 million. Kazawa... Uh, Vice, uh, no major surprise here. Antoine Griezmann leaving for just £26 million. Pounds, a bit of a surprise. Um, we go before that, uh, signing some expected players, really. Uh, Mangala left for £6 million, but uh, Leroy Sane went to Real Madrid for 57 up to £84 million. Pounds. He seems to have done quite well. Gained two kilos in weight, I think. Um, but he didn't even play that much. He was barely playing and they got £57 million for him. How on earth did that happen? Um, No other major signings there. Uh, They were really going on a spending spree. You can tell they were trying to replace some clear deficiencies in the club. £199 million spent that year. Uh, No major players going out. In fact, no players going out. David Silva going to Seattle Sounders for £1 million. Um, spent 166 million the year before that, bringing in Griezmann for 73 million pounds. Uh, no major players going out yet again. So it looks like what they essentially did was just spend an absolute fortune bringing players into the club to make up for their deficiencies. Um, so that's quite an interesting approach. Let's have a look at how Manchester United got on. Well, Manchester United did struggle initially getting beaten in their first few games in the Europa League as well, but then they put together a nice running, winning run, had three draws in a row and then three defeats in a row, including in the FA Cup, but made the knockout stages of the Europa League all the way to the quarterfinal and the semi-final and actually won the Europa League in their first season with their massive squad. I think Zlatan Ibrahimovic may have had an absolute belter of a season. Um, doing very well overall that year. Uh, the year after that, not starting well, we're losing to PSG in the UEFA Super Cup, but back in Champions League action, they clearly made it through because of the Europa League victory, but possibly through the Premier League as well, made the Champions League knockout stages and then got beaten by Atletico Madrid um, and didn't make it past the knockout stages. Knocked out by Manchester City in the FA Cup, weren't able to do enough there, uh, but seemed to do quite well in the Premier League that year. The year after that, Again, a very good start. Back in Champions League action again. Knocked out of the EFL Cup quarterfinal by Arsenal, but got through the first knockout stages and then, I think, got through against Real Madrid in the Champions League quarterfinals and then were knocked out by Spurs in the Champions League semi-final. That was, looked like quite an interesting tie. But they managed to win the FA Cup, so they are clearly doing a lot better than Manchester City with this huge squad. They win the UEFA Super Cup, um, in extra time. How have they qualified for the UEFA Super Cup? Did they win? 
Oh, they actually won the Champions League. I didn't see that. They did get through against Spurs and it cut off at the bottom, but they actually won the Champions League final 3-0 against PSG and the FA Cup. And they did very well in the Premier League as well. Um, again, doing very, very well, putting together an excellent run of form, uh, carrying on through into the Champions League quarterfinals. They were knocked out by Barcelona, knocked out of the FA Cup as well, but a good Premier League run quite clearly. They did win the EFL Cup that year as well. Um, doing well again, three defeats in a row not helping them, but that's just the streakiness of this game. They didn't make the Champions League knockout stage. Instead, in the Europa League, uh, managed to make it to the final of the Europa League, which the game has cut off, so we'll just refresh this page. And they won at the Europa League as well. So it's quite clear to me, I think, that it is the big team that is much, much better than the little team. In the heads-to-heads, it was hard to tell. It kind of swung between the two. But there's no doubt Manchester United have benefited the most. They've also won uh, the Premier League twice now, um, finishing second as well the year before that. After a disappointing first two seasons, they certainly recovered and got their squad together. In terms of transfers, if we have a look at their transfer history, and I don't think they'll have spent anywhere near as much money as Manchester City. They did spend £95 million this season. Um, they let a few players go out, but nobody too surprising. Uh, spent a lot of money this season with uh, Koke and Laporte coming in for big transfer fees. Nobody leaving the club. Uh, Renato Sanchez brought in for £83 million pounds, um, and Breel and Bolo. They did let a few players go this season, um, but none of the players that were in the club originally, really. Jesse Lingard was one of them, Phil Jones another. Uh, spent £68 million pounds on Morata and let Jesse Lingard go to Southampton. Eric Bailly was let go to Arsenal. Um, but you, it's very clear to me from all of this that actually Manchester United were by far the better team. They benefited a lot more from this um, because their players would still have the pace stats. They were just taller and they were just bigger, which makes them a lot stronger on the pitch. So they would have been able to absolutely bully teams into submission, whereas Manchester City would have been very easy to knock off the ball, which is why Manchester United have become very, very strong and City have totally dropped off. Or at least that would be my impression of it. I am tempted to see, if we're able to, how Zlatan Ibrahimovic got on as the main striker. He's now an assistant manager, but he's not played. If we have a look at his career stats for United, 15 goals, 29 that season, uh, only two in his last season, but 18 the season before that, uh, doing quite well for them. He didn't play for very long, but he wasn't the star man they maybe thought he would be. If we have a look at one of the games um, between Manchester United and Manchester City, maybe the first season would be best just to see how they got on uh, when they had their full squad. That was a 1-0 victory for City. Let's have a look at the 2-0 victory for City. I think that could be more interesting if I hit the right button. Well, it looks like the game doesn't actually let you look at the highlights of these matches. I don't really understand the reasoning behind that. Um, but if we have a look at the match stats and the player ratings, Manchester United did win this game. They still had a lot of the players that we gave them in the squad. The likes of Paul Bogba in there, uh, Daily Blind in there as well, doing very well. Um, Chris Smalling on the bench. Sergio Romero as well would have been one of the massive players for them. Man City still had company in Otamendi at the back, despite them being so short. John Stones in the back as well is never going to do them a favour. They really need to get some good defenders in there. They used to actually got more of the first team players left than Manchester United did. Um, I'm not sure if those stats are any good, but these stats might be interesting. It looked like Manchester United edged possession. Shots were fairly even between them. Um, but the fouls were pretty even as well, which maybe is a little bit surprising. I would have expected Man United to muscle City off the ball a bit more. Um, but overall, it looks like Manchester United benefited heavily. So if you're looking at whether a big player and a short player is, or which one of the two you would rather go for, if you've got two similar players and the only difference is their height and weight, I would definitely go for the bigger player based on this evidence. Um, if you've enjoyed this experiment, do drop a like on the video. If you'd like to see another part to it, then do let me know in the comments. Or if you've got other ideas for experiments we can try, just let me know. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Football Manager experiments or want to check out some of the other series on my channel. But until next time, see ya!